So, so again, we're going to read from Ephesians 1. <laughs> and it's a privilege to bring the Word of God today. It's always a privilege just to share God's Word. And when I read through this, there was a song that came up in my mind. I remember a bit younger. It's, the song is called, Look at What the Lord Has Done. And when I read through this stuff, it just like, you know, it just spoke to my heart. And what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us, really made me excited this morning just to, to see His goodness, to see His mercy, to see His love. And also, a couple of people said this morning we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I just want to share a testimony before I start here. Yeah. Is that on Sunday night, because I was just off until um, I started working on Wednesday. So, my, so Sunday night, the Lord laid my heart to go to Steve to visit him at his workplace. And God said to me, take stuff here for communion. And I said, okay. So I found Steve, so I was doing, I said, okay, I'm going to come around on Monday. So I arrived there at his workplace on Monday, and there was a car in front of me, and then I was next, and this gate opened, I just see all these car parts there, when the shipment arrived at Steve's place, and it's like bull bars, and it's everything there. And I'm thinking, yo, I'm actually going back tomorrow when it's more quiet down, because now it's going to be busy. And I'm thinking, because I've got a chance now, because they're like busy, the guy in front of me, so I can still turn around and come back the following morning. And I just felt, how this word says, no, today is the day. You need to do it today. So, okay. so I got there, and so it was Steve and his usual two guys, and there was four other guys there as well that came to help with the packing of the, putting the stock away. And so we were talking, as we were talking there, and then, so they were busy packing up the stuff. The first they loaded another, some stuff into a truck that was really waiting to take um, parts away. And then I was talking to Steve, and Lord, I told him, oh God, I had my heart to do communion. Um, and whoever is interested can join us. And he said, okay, we'll just extend the invitation to everybody. And so everybody came. There's one guy was standing by the, in the door, and he was like, I could see in his face, like, he was not really interested. And I, and I knew why before, and as well. Anyway, so as I brought the word of God, I brought, um, talk about communion. And then Holy Spirit just like, took, <laughs> took, took like a detour. And scriptures came up, and I just gave scriptures and scriptures. And there's a young guy there, I think like curly, and I can just see his face like light up as I was speaking. And then I knew this is, so God had an appointment with that guy. Okay. And as I spoke, I can just see his heart and his, his whole, whole life starts living up and he's like, and we did a communion. And so afterwards, Steve said, okay, you want pray, just ask him. So this guy said, he wants pray. And... So I had a chance just to deal with him, he shared with me. And then I just knew that, so God had planned everything ahead of time. God had an appointment with that specific guy on that Monday. If I turned around and would have come the next day, that guy wouldn't have been there. Okay, so other guys, they're also blessed, but God had an appointment with one person. Okay. And we have to be obedient. A lot of times when we say, God, we want to do all these mighty works for you, and do all these things, but it starts with obedience. God wants us to be obedient. And when He speaks, we need to act. Because a lot of times, oh, I want to hear God's voice. And you hear God's voice. But what do you do with it then? If you do nothing, then it would be better of not hearing His voice. Because I would have, oh, I should have done this, I should have done this. Yeah. But to me, it was just blessed to see that God can use any situation. God can use any person. Sometimes we think it's going to be big things and you're saying um, being on idols and whatever, but God uses us where we are. Okay. And this morning, on, that, on Monday morning or Monday, it was for that one person. God had a word. God had to show light into his life. And it's not difficult when we are led by the Holy Spirit. If you have to do it on your own, that becomes difficult. If you are trying, that becomes difficult. Okay. 
But just today we're going to read and just going to see we need to focus on what the Lord has done. Has mean it's in the past. It's done. We don't have to redo it. We can build upon it. Amen. Okay, let's go. Uh, Ephesians 1 verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So here we see that God have blessed us already. Okay. With what? It says all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We started at our home church. We had some other people in there as well. So we learned that all means alles. Kaufela. Okay. Everything. Okay. Nothing excluded. Zonke. I think it's that one. Eh? Okay. It's everything. Okay. Nothing excluded. God has given us all spiritual blessing. It's available to us. Okay. In Christ Jesus. What I love about Paul, and when we read about Paul, everything we read about Paul is in Christ, with Christ, by Christ, through Christ. Yes. Okay. Paul never ever said anything of us apart from Christ. When we read about it, everything is in Christ. And that's what I love. It says that He's given us all these things in Christ. So we can say, oh, God has given us all those things, but if you are not in Christ... This is not for you. So Christ is what defines who we are. We are in Him. Okay. When we stay, him, all, stay in Him, all these are available to us. Okay. Colossians 1 says that the mercy has been revealed. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Okay. So God has put Christ in us. And then two chapters later it says, we are hidden with Christ in God. Yes. Okay. So God has put us, Christ in us and us with Christ in Him. So God has never ever, His idea is for us to be with Christ. That's what I also said, he sent, he, he sent Christ to reconcile us back to God. Reconcile means something has been reconciled before, been together. So reconcile means Christ has reconciled us, means put us back with Him in, in God. Okay, so we are in Christ. So God doesn't see us without Christ. Okay. When we accept Him. Okay. So He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And then it says, verse 4 says, As He have chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Okay, going to He have chosen us. So we are chosen. He actually picked us out for himself as his own. So God has done that already. So you being here this morning, you are chosen by God. Picked out by God. Okay. To be in Christ. It says before the foundation of the world. A lot of things we spoke this morning as well was um, predestined. We are predestined. And we're not here by accident, you said it. So God confirmed already. We're not here by accident. But, so God had a big planning session for all of us. Okay, he says, this is Adam. This is what I want Adam to do. And God had like a write down everything. Okay, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece, created for good works, which he has planned for us a long time ago, or predestined for us. Okay. So God has planned good works for each one of us. What I love about it, it says not just God has planned works for us, but it says God has planned good works. It means you are going to enjoy what God has planned for you. So each one of us, God has good plans for you. 
But we can only get to those good plans or good works if we line up with God. If we stay in Christ, then we can do it by Him, through Him, with Him. Amen. Okay, so He says He has given us uh, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. Means, holy means to be consecrated. Set apart for Him. God has consecrated. You have set us apart for Him. That's why we can't keep on living in our old ways. We can't follow the old way of doing things. We need to repent. Repent means walking this way and now I'm turning around. Walking the opposite way. We cannot continue walking the old way. We cannot continue doing the old things. It says Christ has come to kill the old man. Our old selves are dead. Okay, when you said raise the dead, it was not talking about your old self. Okay. So a lot of times we want to resurrect the dead in our old ways. We want to continue in the old ways. Okay. I think even in Galatians, he says to the Galatians, who have bewitched you? Who have fooled you? You've, you've accepted Christ by grace. Now I want to go back to works. When we go back to works, we are moving away from Christ. We're moving ourselves out of Him. And it's not His fault. It's our fault when we move out. When we follow our own ways. Okay, so we are consecrated, set apart for Him. And it says, without blame before Him in love. So here we see again, for Him in love. So yeah, God is love. Okay. Verse 5 says, Having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. So He has foreordained us, He's predestined us to adoption of children. Okay. So God has planned for us to become His children. So once we were separated, we were alienated from God. But through Jesus Christ, we are bringing back into adoption. Okay, he adopted us again. Brought us back into his family. So if you're brought back into the family, what do you share then? Is it a name? Yes. What else do we share? Same home. That's important. Okay. What else do we share? Same father. Same? Father. Same father, yes. Okay. So God has brought us all this or brought us back into his family. Okay. So that we can be part of his family. So we share the same home, we share the same father, and now we share the same brothers and sisters. Okay. Now the family is growing. Okay. If you see ever seen children's home with just one person in there? It's not a children's home. Eh? Okay. But the old, everybody who comes in there is part of the family. They're part of the children. Okay. And they share in the benefits of that house. Okay. So we get to, when we accept Jesus Christ, we become part of, his, of God's family again. We share of His benefits. And that's good news for us. Because He's done it already for us. Okay. And I love it, it says... Um, to Jesus Christ Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. God takes good pleasure in us. And the Bible says in Isaiah 53, it says, It pleased God to send Jesus for us, to reunite us back to Him. It was God's pleasing will. Okay. And Jesus, He died on the cross. To please God. Because He knew what God has planned for us. He knew the only way to get us back into His home, into His family, was for Him to lay down His life. To remove what was standing between us and God. Okay. So sin was standing between us and man. Rebellion was standing between, sorry, between God and man. Sin was standing between God and man. Being disobedient was standing between God and man. And it says Jesus became obedient 
unto the cross. Laying down his life for us. Okay. And through his blood, our sins were taken away. Everything that was between us and God was taken away. And the good news is that now we are accepted by him. Whatever was between us and God is taken away. And that is the gospel. That we need to accept what Jesus has done for us. Because although it has been done, we still need to accept it. Doesn't mean because of Jesus done it, everybody goes to heaven. Okay, it's still a decision, it's still needs to you still need faith. Faith in what Jesus has done is the truth. Faith in what Jesus has done has opened a door for us to move into his house, into God's house, become part of his family. Amen. Okay, so it was his good pleasure. Do the will of God. Verse 6 says, To the praise of all glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Amen. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. And that's humanity's basic two needs, is to be loved and to be accepted. That's why people do crazy stuff to try and be accepted. To try and be accepted by other people. But then it says, God, when He has done, has brought us, uh, sorry, have made us accepted in the Beloved. Okay. God accepts us because of what Jesus has done. Do you hear that? A lot of times we think we have to talk about as well performance. We think about it's all about performance. How much I read my Bible, how much I pray, and if I don't read my Bible, God doesn't love me. And so we let all these things or works determine who we are. Okay. Instead of putting our eyes back onto Jesus. Since so Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. If we are concentrating on doing the works to be accepted, we are setting ourselves up for failure. Do you hear that? If you want to please God through your works, you are setting yourself up for, fla for failure. Flavia. What is that? <laughs> okay, for failure. So we need to put our eyes on Him. He has done it. He has done it. And I can certainly not do a better job than Jesus. Okay, no matter how hard I try. So our, our faith must be in Him, in His works. Okay. And that's a problem, I think, a lot of Christians, is that we, we try too hard to live a right life. We try too hard not to do the wrong things. Because every action comes from a thought. If I say, don't think about a white elephant, what did you just think about? What did you see in your mind? A white elephant. Okay. But I said, don't think about it. So if I say, don't swear, don't swear, don't swear, don't swear, what is my mind hearing? Swear, swear, swear. So what thoughts are coming up in my mind? Swear. Okay. So now I'm doing the things that I'm not trying to do. So a lot of times we focus on the things we don't want to do. But that's not how Christ came. He says He came to set us free. And God says, put all these things aside. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Now if we look unto what He has done, what God has done, what Jesus has done for us, we focus on those things. What are we producing? Those things. If it says, we are accepted in Beloved. And I'm thinking, God, thank you that I'm accepted you, in you as your beloved. You are my beloved. I'm your beloved. Okay. I'm accepted by you through what Jesus has done. What does that produce in me? <coughs> Thankfulness. <coughs> now, if I'm thinking of, um, I should not, if I'm going to swear, I'm going to do something and God's not going to like me anymore, then my focus is totally wrong. If I do this wrong, God's going to not like me. 
So my focus is not on pleasing God, it's not on making mistakes. But when our focus changes to Jesus Christ, to God, to thanking Him that I'm part of His, I'm accepted by Him, not by my works, but what I've Jesus done, then whatever I do flows out of that acceptance. Then I want to read the Bible. Then I want to pray. Then I want to do the good things. Then I want to fall into the good work that He has planned for me. And that's why it's important that we need to get our eyes right. We need to get our minds right. We need to get our focus right. By keeping it on Jesus Christ. Okay. So when, as soon as we focus on, on the works, then we forget that we are accepted. Because now, me being accepted will be based on my works. Amen. Does it mean we don't fail? No, it doesn't. But it means when we fail, we can go back to Him. Saying, Father, sorry. I've tried doing it my way. That was stupid of me. Sorry, I put my mind back onto You. I'm Thank You that I'm accepted by You through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, that's what I pray to you. Thank You, Father. Seven, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So we have redemption. means we have deliverance. We have salvation through His blood. Amen. We sang this morning, Nothing but the blood. Nothing means nothing. Okay. Just like all means all, nothing means nothing. <laughs> if you've got nothing, you can show nothing. Okay. So we can do nothing except putting our faith in Him. That's our part. Amen. Putting our faith in Him, that's what we need to do. And then being obedient, listening, tuning our ears, keeping our focus on Him. So then he says, so he is our redemption, our deliverance, our salvation through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So through him we have forgiveness, through him we have redemption. And he says, according to the riches of his grace. So it's again, not through our works. Through His generosity of God's grace. God has set us free so that we can be free, so that we can walk free. free. Okay. In Him. Through Him. Okay. Verse 8 says, Wherein we have abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. So God says, have abounded toward us. So He gives lavishly. He gives in excess. That's one thing about God. He gives in excess. Okay. So, I've seen God multiply food when food is needed. So, my wife, we had a camp and then there's a lot more people arrived and she was stirring or dishing out uh, chicken and it was like a third in this big pot and as you get to the bottom, she like stirs it and as she stirs it, it goes up to a third again. Okay, and she dishes. So we gave about, there was about more than doubles, so about three times the amount of people on that day that were supposed to be there. So we gave to all of them, and they had seconds. Okay. And there was one plate, this size plate, that had like rolls, and it was cut in three. And it was covered with plastic, and I opened two thirds of the plate. And after everybody, so everybody who comes around, they have a piece of bread with their food. And after everybody had, that third that was still covered was still covered. Okay. That's God. Excess. Lavishing. More than enough. Okay. We've seen God at the feeding. Multiplying containers. Okay. The food came there pre-packed. 
I knew because I already made and we, we knew how many were coming, how many she had. And at night, when I, because normally when I arrive on Tuesday night, I have like this a quick head count, just to see how many people there. And I got there and I'm like, yo, here's a lot of people. Okay. And Holy Spirit said to me, you don't count. I'm like, okay. So we prayed, and it was in two big containers, and two of the guys saw this side, and the guys saw that side, and went around, and they met each other on the other side. And it was something like, I think 18 containers left. Food containers. Okay. After feeding way more than people that were there. And the cont available containers. And then other people came on late, and that 18 was enough for them. Okay. That's God. Went to Botswana with Chris and them. We went to give out food to the widows and the um, poor people there. We arrived at one place, we give out food. This lady's friend comes there. And she asked her for some of her food. So she says, no, I'm going to ask you for your own food. So she asked us, so this is a big bag of mealy meal, rice, macaroni, uh, oil, mayo, and um, tomato sauce. Okay. So she asked us, can she also, get, and then Chris says, okay, one of the last ladies on the list is one of those part of the church. So you can give her the next week. So we count and there's two of each, there's uh, skulk. There's two of everything there. Okay. So we just go drop off, as that's after we dropped off the, the, the signals from before we went back to the lady. So there's two left. We go pick up the lady, we drive a long way to her house, we get there. We open up the back, and there's three of everything. Three of everything. Okay. There was two when we last closed the lid on the back of, back of his bus. Okay. We get to the next place, to open up, more than enough. God is able to supply sufficiently, efficiently, in surplus, whatever you need. But God will never let you waste. Okay. We've seen that. There's like packets, closed packets, sealed, bottles. God can duplicate bottles. Okay. He's awesome, man. We can trust Him in everything. So over December, that first week in January, my brother-in-law came to help me put up, uh, we put in paving under the shade board. And so we started a little bit on one day because we were waiting for, for some of the sand. So we got a bit of sand from someone else and we put sand down and we put some bricks down. And I was looking at the bricks and so I only had like a quarter of um, this area covered. And I looked in the back and I saw, well, there's about only about, so that's about a third of what was the total number of bricks. And I'm thinking, yo, we're not going to make it. So maybe, so now we're thinking about other plans. And the next morning I wake up and I say, Father, and I saw my brother in law, so I told him, so you see this on this thing here, I would really like to have it up to you. And I'll show him the markers where I wanted it. So I said, okay, what we'll do, we'll start in the back and we'll just move it forward. And the next morning I wake up and say, Father, you know my heart. I've seen you multiply things. And this is what I really want. And we went to pick up, we got the sand, got delivered, we put this video thing down. And we got someone to help us. And this guy was just bringing wheelbarrows of bricks, which was next to my house. This, but this was lying there for about over 10 years, 12 years now. And these guys were laying, the bricks were coming, and we were laying, and the bricks were coming, and we were laying, and the bricks were coming. And then we said, okay, this is a bit more than we, getting a bit further than we wanted or expected. And so now we're moving close to the mark where I'm, I said this is what I really wanted. And we got to that mark. <laughs> okay. And I think it was like, because I had two colors, like a gray and a pink um, <coughs> bricks. And there was, I think, two or three gray bricks left when we finished everything. Okay. So God can even multiply bricks. Okay. How do we limit God? Why do we limit God? So my faith was not in the number of bricks. My faith was in God. And he has never, ever let us down. 
He's a God of plenty, the all sufficient one. But even something small, you know, like saving bricks, God can make a way. I mean, And when you have abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. So God has given us every kind of wisdom and understanding. God gives us practical insight. When we are a child of God, God can give you practical insight. Okay. Things you have never done before. Like Scott said, go and scout, whatever. But other people might see it one way, but God can show you another way to do things. God can show another way to make food to multiply it by using wisdom, by being practical. Okay. So I've got one thing we, in making mints, and you put in quick oats in the separately, you make some quick oats, and you put, this, put in some um, sauces with it, it like um, with hot water, so you can multiply your moons with quick oats. Okay. And everybody else, I don't even know the, the difference. Okay. But that's how God can practically help you. Because okay. a lot of times, you need a practical help. A lot of times we expect the miracles, but God can give you wisdom to practi practically do something better. Even the way we do our jobs. God can help you there. God can show you there how to do something better. Okay. If you look at technology, how everything changes. Where does all these new ideas come from? If we are God's children. He can give us the ideas. He can help us to be creative. He can give us wisdom. He can give us understanding to practically make something better. So that's why my, my, my prayer always is God. Give, give us creativity in whatever we do. I see with my wife, she's doing books for the school. So, <laughs> sorry, so this is just turning off, but someone who hasn't had education or teaching education or certificate or nothing, okay, God opened for her a door to start at the school. She did seven, eight years, eight years at the school helping them out. Now she's got her own company making books for that school. Curriculum. Okay. So how can a person who hasn't gone to varsity, how can a person who hasn't got all the knowledge, degrees, whatever, how can a person like that now be making curriculum, getting paid to make curriculum for the good? And even that other schools are also wanting the books. Okay. They're seeing the quality. The teacher was saying, wow, we haven't had this kind of people coming through the uh, quality of students coming through the school because of what you are teaching them, what you've done. Okay. That's God. That's being practical. That's God giving you understanding how to do things, how to do things better. Okay. That's how God can work with us, through us, by us. Okay. God wants us to excel. We are not just here by accident. We are predestined. We are foreordained. Okay. We get to make a difference. We get to make a difference. But we need to keep our eyes on Him. We need to put our focus on Him. We need to rely on Him to help us. Okay, verse 9 says, Having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. So God has made known unto us the mystery of his will. He hath made known to us. Okay. It says, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. God wants to share his mysteries with us. God wants to share his secrets with us. But guess what? You need to seek Him. You need to get close to Him. If I don't know somebody, I'm not going to tell people things that my secrets or things are close to me. Okay. A lot of times we expect God to just open up and we just want everything. Okay. We just want to hold out our hands and He must give. 
but God wants intimate relationship with each one of us. God wants an intimate relationship with each one of us. He wants us to seek Him. As we seek Him, He gives. Because even as a father, if your child is loving, your child is respecting you, your child is like spending time with you, you get to share your knowledge with your child. If my child is in his own room playing games all day or all week and I'm busy working and he does his own thing, he can't expect me to share my stuff with him if he's on his own. Okay. But if I'm outside and he comes and helps me, we're building something, I can impart my knowledge, I can impart whatever I know to him. And that's for his benefit. It's not for my benefit. Okay. But it's for his benefit. I remember when I was small, I used to go help my father. He, he was a very practical guy. Okay. So my father-in-law, he was very impractical. Okay. He was like, he used to have those short-term short -term fixes. Don't worry, we can make, we can make it right later. Just fix it now. Okay. So he would like put something together, engine parts, whatever, and there's some screws left. He's like, don't worry about this, man. It's fixed. <laughs> okay. That was my father-in-law. He's like, very, okay. Like, I mean, screws are supposed to do something. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's in, it's done, it's, it's not done. And he drives around the next time and something falls off or something. He doesn't know why it fall, fell off. <laughs> okay. But there's a reason why there's so many screws, okay? You have to do it right. My father, he used to, my father's like, no shortcuts. And he used to sometimes irritate me. Because now I'm going to help him and I know. Like, this is this. No, he says, no, we need to do it properly. It takes time, but to do it right. Okay. But I've learned from him, if you spend that time doing it right, you're not going to have consequences later on. Okay. He's the type of person um, at their church that had a sound cable coming from the back to the front. And this thing is about this big, and it's just wires. Okay. And he used to go to the front, put all the wires up, goes to the back, puts all the wires in, and he says, okay, it's done. So the pastor, they said, I'm only going to test that all the wires are correct. He says, okay, you can stay behind and test. I know what I've done. I've done it. <laughs> you can test it. Okay. And at that, my pastor, my um, father has passed away in 2012. But even at that, pastor also passed away. But so one of his lessons, when we, we got together, is like, he remembers that day. It's like this snake of cables. And my father went to one side, he went to the other side, and he says, okay, it's done. And he said, let's test. My father said, no, I know what I've done, I've done it. <laughs> okay, he's done a good job, he's spent the time, he knows what he's put into it. Okay. And this pastor, then my father left, and this, father, this pastor went and tested it to make sure. And it, guess what, everything was working. Okay. But the more time, if we spend time, the time I spent with him, he imparted his knowledge with me. When we spend time in the Word of God, His knowledge gets imparted in us. This Word becomes alive in here. I always say, God doesn't go for you. God goes for you. God goes for your heart. Because here, someone else can change. If you experience God in your heart, nobody can change it. If God is, a, if God is real here, if God is alive here, this cannot change it. Yes, you might go through troubles. You might go through things where you think, oh, maybe God has forsaken me or I've done something wrong, whatever. But then this thing starts speaking to you. The truth that's in here starts speaking to you. It says, you are accepted in the beloved. Jesus paid a price for you. It's not you. It's him. He has done it. And then I'm like, oh, sorry. Okay. Jesus, I love you. Thank you. Okay. Sure, man. God's good. Okay. And I love it. It says again, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Jesus made a decision to save us. Jesus made a decision to bring us to the Father. It was his good pleasure. He has, it was his purpose. It was to bring us back to God. His purpose was to reunite us with the Father. 
the inverse tent is, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay, so he purposed himself that he's going to bring everything back together. Okay, bring us back into him. In fullness. I love it. It says, in the fullness of time. So at the right time, we'll do that. Verse 11 says, in whom we, are, we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we have obtained an inheritance. And that's another thing, if you're part of the family, guess what? You inherit. You get part of the inheritance. Okay. So when we get to Christ, we become part of His inheritance. Okay. We get inheritance from Him. So we get the portion. So being predestined according to the purpose of him who have worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So here we see again, predestined. Not just by fluke, not just by accident. Predestined, chosen, appointed beforehand according to his purpose. Who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. If you want to get to the good works that God has planned, you need to line up with Christ. You need to stay in Christ. Because He's able to know, He knows what the plans is that He has for you. Okay. A lot of times we miss it. Because we are trying too hard to do our own thing. We are trying too hard to please God. But pleasing God is relying on who Jesus is for you, what Jesus wants for you, what his purpose is for you. Being obedient to him, that's pleasing to God. Amen. Okay. The staff says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trust in Christ and in whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that he believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. He's talking about um, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted. And he's about talking about the apostles, the first people who trusted him. So they were there for the praise of his glory. And then he says, in whom you also trusted. That's us. Okay, we have also trusted after we have heard the word of truth. So truth has spoken to our hearts. Truth has changed our lives. Okay. The gospel of our salvation. In whom ye also after ye believed, ye were sealed with the spirit of promise. Okay, so God has given us a spirit of promise. As we are sealed. It says a pledge a foretaste, a down payment on our inheritance. Okay, so we got a, a down payment on our inheritance. Yes. So we don't have to wait until we're dead or someone else is dead. We're getting a down payment on our inheritance. Okay. Now we are sealed. Okay, we are covered. It is it's a guarantee, a pledge. Okay. That what we what we. So when we accept Jesus Christ, we believe He puts His seal upon us. He covers us. Okay. And that's awesome. Man. It says also, in anticipation of the full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it. So it is a down payment. Okay. So when you buy a car or you, when you so a lay by, okay. that's a better example. So lay by, the thing stays at a shop. But you have to pay like a deposit or some money, put it, putting money down. And then you're paying it off every month. Okay. But when you put your money down, you are assured that that thing is kept aside for you. Okay. So in Jesus Christ, He has 
put that money down for us. Okay. Our inheritance is in him. We're going to, it's a foretaste of heaven. Okay, already in us. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 15 says, Wherefore I also, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you my prayers. Okay, so here's Paul saying that I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. So how many people have heard of your faith? Are people seeing your faith in the Lord Jesus? Are people seeing how you are trusting God? Are people seeing when you're going through difficult circumstances? Are you worrying? Or are you taking it to God? Are you standing up for what you believe? Are you standing on the Word of God? Are you believing what the Word of God says when we're going through difficult circumstances? Because only the Word of God can help you through those circumstances. Only the Word of God, your faith in Him, can carry you through. So let us be those people, the other people we hear about, that other people talk about. Have you seen Jolene's faith in God? This has happened to her, but look what God is doing through her. Look how she's standing on God. Amen. And it says also, and love unto all the saints. And, uh, Adam also spoke about this morning. Let us put ourselves aside. Let us esteem others. Let us show our love towards others. Let us do uncomfortable things for others. Okay. Let us go to other places and take communion for people, no matter what people are going to say. Let us show God's love to people. Because out of that, God wants to speak to maybe some one person. One person changed. That's awesome. Man. Even rejoices, one person changed. Okay. But that can only happen when we show love. When we step out of our own comfort. Be there for other people. Comfort them. The one day, I um, was spending time in the Lord and in the Word of God and reading and thinking about Holy Spirit being our comforter. And then Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to always be uncomfortable. I'm like, what? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Okay. Then he says, because I am your comforter. How can Holy Spirit do his job when I am comfortable? How can the Holy Spirit do His job when I'm in my comfort zone? So I had a whiteboard like this at home and I used to draw like a circle on the bottom and says your comfort zone. Okay, you're responsible for that. And then a big circle on the rest. See, this is where things happen. Things happen outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Things happen when you are uncomfortable. Andrew, you're smiling, you know, eh? <laughs> Experience. Okay. So, when you're stepping out of your comfort zone, that's where, Holy Spirit, you're not reliant on yourself. There's, that's where you're reliant on God. That's where you are, when you are standing on Him. Not on your ways, His ways. That's when you are dependent on Him. That's what I always say to people, when God does something for you, don't look for a method. Don't look for a method. Because that would have worked for that situation. If you're going to follow the same method next time, you're relying on a method that worked the previous time. That God has shown you that it's worked. But now you, that becomes a comfort zone. That becomes something I'll be comfortable with. Now I'm trying the same method that worked last time, I'm doing it again. Guess what? <laughs> Larry knows it all. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Why? It was me. I tried a method. I'm trying to build my own comfort zone. A lot of times we need to be, or not always we need to be reliant on Him to lead us, Him to comfort us. Because what will work now will not work in the next situation. If I speak to one person, Try the same thing with the other person, that won't work. Because now that's why the problem with methods and keys and stuff like that. Twelve keys for this, twelve methods for that, whatever. 
because Holy Spirit knows exactly what's in that person's heart. When I'm standing in front of that person, I'm relying on Holy Spirit. He's got all the experience. And what might have worked for another person will not work on this person. But if I say, Holy Spirit, let your will be done. Help me to touch this person for you. Because at my work, before COVID and it, um, we have a fellowship there and a lot of people come to me because I'm seen as a work pastor, Pastor D. And they come and speak to me and they pour out their whole heart in front of me. And I'm sitting a lot of times sitting opposite them. I'm like, I've sure, got no idea what they're going through. I can't even relate to it. So they're pouring out their whole heart to me. I'm like, thank you, Father. But this person has come to me. I might not know what they're experiencing. But Holy Spirit, you know what they're experiencing. And I listen to them. And out of my out of the world, there's limited options, there's limited advice, whatever. Because if I even know what they're going through, I haven't, I haven't even experienced it. I'm, how am I going to be able to give them advice? Okay. So I listen, and I say, Father, thank you that you love this person so much. That your heart is for this person. Give me your heart. And then I start speaking to them. Not of what's in here, but what's in here. Okay. And then afterwards, I'm like, wow, that was awesome. Okay, because out of this thing it would have been total disaster. Okay, but out of this thing, Holy Spirit being led, leading us, truth leading us. That's why it's important to fill our hearts with truth. Because at the right time, when I'm speaking to a person, person, as I'm chatting there, I'm like, and the word of God says this, and the word of God says this, and this is your situation, and everything just falls in place. And that person is like, wow, thank you. And they stand up and they walk out there comforted by the comforter, by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, verse 17. Okay, Paul is saying in our prayers, and he says that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. How awesome is that? What an awesome prayer. That God, that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give unto you, each one of us sitting here, the spirit of wisdom. Whatever people are going through, if, if, whatever you're going through, God can give you a spirit of wisdom, a revelation in the knowledge of Him. Insight. And his secrets. I was like, God giving us his secrets. Okay? And God giving us his ways of solving things. So he's a deep, intimate knowledge of him. That can only come from us spending time with him. Our relationship with him. And we said as well this morning, be still. Let us become still before him. Let us grow into knowledge of him. It says, the eye of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Okay, so God gives us enlightenment, understanding. He floods us with light, his light. How awesome is that? And it says um, that he may know the hope of his calling. And that the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. So God gives understanding of what he has done for us. Okay. What, who we are in him. It says, and what is the gra exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. God has given us, it says, an exceeding greatness of his power to us word. His power is inside of us. The power of Jesus Christ is in us. 
to hear that. Say, the power of Christ is in me. The power of Christ is in me. Say it. Okay, do you believe it? Okay, if you believe it, you need to also act on it. Okay. It says, the power of Christ is in me. His resurrection power, His life-giving power is in us. His love is in us. Then it's not difficult to love other people. Then it's not difficult to step out onto the plate and help someone else. Amen. Okay, it says, Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Okay, so this power of Christ, power that rose Christ from the dead, that is in us. And Christ is now sitting at the right hand of God. Amen. It says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also which is to come. So Jesus Christ is above everything. Above everything, all principalities, all power. Okay. When Jesus rose, says, All power has been given unto me of heaven and earth. Okay. First Adam had only had dominion over earth. Okay. It says, Jesus is the second Adam. Jesus who came to restore us back to him. Unto him all power is given on heaven and earth. And then Jesus says, After that, he says, Now go ye out with His power that's inside of us. So God has given us His power. That power is not inside of us. What do, do, what do we do with it? That's the question we need to answer. What do we do with His power? If His power is able to do all the miraculous. And we battle to get through our day. Okay. We're not applying. We're not keeping our eyes on Him. I mean, it says, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Everything is under the feet of Jesus. Okay. He is the head over everything to the church. It says, which is his body? The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Jesus, but the fullness of him fills all in all. For in that his body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete, who fills everything everywhere with himself. Okay. God is able to make you complete <coughs> with his power, his fullness. Does it make sense? Okay, so we can live with our focus on him. Trusting Him, that God wants us to be, or we can try and do our own things. Okay. Today we just went through this. Let's see what, look at the Lord has done. It's done. We can use it, we can apply it, we can make this part of our life. Amen. Amen. Good news. Yes. Okay, let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for your grace, your mercy, your love this morning, Father. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you have given us your Son, that you have paid a full price, Jesus, that we can be reconciled back to God, that we can be part of your kingdom, Father, that we can be part of your family. And this morning we get the privilege to call you Father. What a privilege, Lord. And Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, that you have put Christ in us. You have enabled us with, it says, with Christ's fullness. Christ's fullness in us. You have given Christ for us. Lord, for us to stay in Him. Lord, that everything we do, Lord, we can do in obedience to His voice. Lord, we thank You this morning, Father, that everything we've read this morning, Lord, that we, You have given Your Son, Father, where You have given us everything, Lord. It says all spiritual blessings are given to us, Lord. Lord, you have done everything for us, Lord. And all you want this morning from us is to depend upon you, to rely upon you, Lord, to find our strength in you, Lord. 
Lord, help us today, Lord, that we will take what we've heard this morning. Holy Spirit, let it be in every person's heart this morning. Let this word go out, Lord. Let, it, let us meditate on it, Lord. And Lord, help us that this word become a truth, Father. And we can put this truth into our hearts, Father. You have spoken to every heart this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, and help us, Lord, to grow in you, Lord. To grow into the full measure, Lord, which you have planned for us, Lord. We thank you for grace to help us. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to comfort us. Help us not to get too comfortable in our own situations, Father, but help us to keep our eyes upon you, Lord. Help us to step out, Lord, when you show us. Help us to be obedient. Help us to listen, Father, to hear your voice. And when we listen, Father, help us also to be doers, Father. That we can act upon the word of God, Lord, and we can make a difference wherever we go, Lord. That people can see Christ in us, Lord, that they can see those are the people who have put their faith in the Lord. Lord, that they can see, Lord, you changing our lives, Lord, and that they also want that in the name of Jesus. Help us, Father, to lay down ourselves, Father, that we'll, we'll lay down ourselves, Lord, and we'll live for others, Lord. And we'll let your love guide us in the name of Jesus. We honor you, we praise you, Lord. Lord, I also want to pray this morning, Lord, for, for Adam, for Hannah, Lord, and especially Judah this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray for healing over his body, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against the affection in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cancel the works, Lord, of the enemy, Lord, of every infection this morning, Father. We cancel it, Father, whoever's causing it this morning, Father. I pray restoration of his body this morning, Lord. In the love of God, your power, Lord, just fill his body this morning in the name of Jesus, Father. Bless their family, Lord, going through this, Lord. Lord, uh, for other kids, Father, they all just be with them as a family this morning, Lord. Lord, just shield them this morning, Lord. Cover them, Lord, with your, with your mighty hand this morning, Lord. Put your hand, reach out this morning, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We bless them this morning, Father. Lord, I pray for every person here this morning, Lord, that just meet us in our needs this morning, Lord, and help us not to get stuck in our needs, but help us to reach out, Lord. There's another thing you show me this morning, Lord, is when we reach out to help others, Lord, you provide in our needs, Father. When we reach out to others, Lord, you take care of us, Lord. Lord, when we reach out, Lord, your spirit flows through us, Lord, and we are just like a pipe, Lord. And Lord, whatever flows through the pipe touches the pipe. Whatever flows through the vessel touches the vessel, Father. If your spirit flows through us, Lord, we also get encouraged. We also get strengthened, Lord. We also healing flows through us, Lord. Whatever is needed flows through us, Father. Help us to be vessels of honor, Lord. Let good things, good things flow through us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We honor you this morning, Lord. We bless you this morning, Father. We say, Lord, we love you, Father. We honor you this morning, Lord. We glorify your name, Father. Lord, just as Jesus said, do everything he did for your, the purpose of your goodwill, Father. Let our hearts, our purpose be, Lord, to do things for your goodwill, Father. For your pleasure, Father. Lord, that this will not be works, Father, but this will be just a reaction of your love, Father, for us, Father. We thank you this morning. We love you, Father. We love you this morning, Lord. We honor you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.